Hi friend, in this video I'm going to try and convince you that the humble, much maligned potato is in fact a superfood. I'm going to give you a breakdown of potatoes, a little bit of their history, their health benefits, and the circumstances when they're not so healthy, why I eat them regularly and why I suggest you might consider it too, and also how you can prepare them in your kitchen so that they taste fantastic. Let's dive right in. I'm Dr. Ryan Williams, your host and the founder of Growing Pure, where I help you make vegan cooking and health fast, simple, and mind-blowingly tasty. So today I'm just going to talk about simple white potatoes. And of course, you already know them, you're already familiar with them. But I find there's a lot of confusion around whether they're healthy or not. So today I'm going to cut through the noise and give you the truth about potatoes. And if you decide you want to be using more potatoes in your kitchen, I want you to be able to do it quickly and efficiently. So I want to give you a gift. It's my guide on how to get hours of your time back when you're preparing food in the kitchen. You'll get my top five time-saving kitchen hacks that will allow you to get your potatoes cooked and out onto the table fast. If that would be helpful to you, please click the link in the description below. It's my free gift to you. So what actually is a potato? Well, their scientific name, Solanum tuberosum, gives us a clue. They are a tuber. So they're a root vegetable. They grow underneath the ground and they are a storage organ for the plant. It's a place where the plant can uh, store starch for later use as energy. And it might interest you to know that potatoes are actually from the nightshade botanical family. So they're actually closely related to tomatoes and peppers. But whereas with tomatoes and peppers, we're eating the fruit of the tree, in this case, we're eating the tubers of the plant. So the potato was first domesticated somewhere around seven to 10,000 years ago in the Andes of South America. And by Inca times, they were widely cultivated as a food crop. And potatoes remained in South America exclusively until the arrival of European explorers and conquistadors who discovered the potato and then brought it back to Europe. And from there, throughout the 16th and 17th centuries, it spread around Europe and to the rest of the world. And since its introduction, it really has become a staple crop and has been a key sort of defender against famine and times of serious hardship and starvation, most famously perhaps in Ireland. And it might interest you to know that during the Second World War, potatoes were actually heavily promoted as a healthy thing for people to be eating, for people to be growing in their gardens. Dig for victory. Thousands of people have discovered that a 10-rod plot will keep a family of five in vegetables eight months of the year. And we had this character of Potato Pete that was used in British wartime propaganda. And he was used to encourage people to start growing potatoes in their garden and make more use of potatoes because there wasn't enough uh, food to easily go around. Carrots that will be a revelation. Potatoes at your service whenever you want them and cabbages fit for a king. Today potatoes are the fourth largest food crop in the world after corn, rice and wheat. And there are perhaps around about 4,000 different varieties, although the majority of those are still confined to South America. Now, perhaps the most striking thing about potatoes is that they are a rich source of starch, which is a critical fuel for humans. So this is glucose. This is a simple sugar molecule. And the body does run off it, but we know that sort of refined, simple glucose is not really a health food. But what's critical is how it changes when we look at starch. So starch made up of amylose and amylopectin are these long chains of glucose chemically bonded together. And this significantly changes the properties. It means that the release of sugar into the bloodstream when we eat starch is much, much slower than if we just had glucose as sort of single units. And this starch and the glucose we derive from it is critical to allow our bodies to function. In fact, our brain runs almost exclusively off glucose. So I think a good analogy here is to think of a car, right? So the car needs lots of 
things to run efficiently. It needs sort of oil and lubricant and windscreen washer fluid and air in the tires. And these, I would say, are a little bit like the micronutrients that we need in our diet, the vitamins, the minerals, the things that keep us healthy and going. But for the car to move anywhere at all, it needs gasoline or petrol. In the same way, our bodies need fuel, and that generally comes from starch. We need a source of energy to do anything, to breathe, to move, to sleep, to do anything. And in a healthy plant-based or vegan diet, or really any diet for that matter, starch should really be at the center of our plates. It should provide the bulk of our calories, our energy that we need to thrive. But actually, beyond just the starch and the source of energy, potatoes are highly nutritious. And many people through necessity or through choice have lived on potatoes and very little else for months at a time. For example, we have Andrew Taylor, who in an effort to sort of lose weight, ate nothing but potatoes and sweet potatoes for a year. We also have this very interesting experiment from back in the 1920s in Poland that put two people, a man and a woman, on a diet of pretty much just potatoes, a little bit of animal fat and not much else. And interestingly, they measured the protein intake and how much protein they were excreting, the nitrogen balance that is called, and found that eating just potatoes, they were actually getting enough protein, <laughs> which is kind of mad. And over a period of six months, these two people seemed to be in good health. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I would not suggest eating exclusively potatoes for good health. But potatoes are actually far more nutritious than people give them credit for. And to sort of prove this point, I'd like to take a look at chronometer and have a look at the nutritional breakdown of some potatoes. All right, so here we are in chronometer. And I've just put in around about 500 calories worth of potatoes, just raw with the flesh and the skin. So essentially just raw, simple potatoes. So this would be maybe around a quarter to a fifth of the recommended calorie intake, depending whether you're a woman or a man. So let's take a look at the nutrition here. As we've said, a decent source of energy, 500 calories from about 650 grams of potato. So this is coming from that starch. But beyond that, we get into some really interesting things. A decent amount of fiber, and fiber is really something that doesn't get enough attention, but a fantastic source of resistant starch and fiber in potatoes. And then take a look at these vitamins. Good amounts of many of these B vitamins. Around about a quarter of your intake of folate, that's vitamin B9. You've hit your intake of B6 and a good amount of B1, 2, 3, and 5 as well. We also see an excellent amount of vitamin C, and this is why potatoes are known as the anti-scurvy vegetable, because historically, when fruits or vegetables might rot quite quickly, potatoes didn't, and they, their vitamin C content allowed people to stay healthy. It is worth noting that their vitamin A, uh, and E content is essentially non-existent. So I would not call these a complete food. We're not getting everything we need, although we are getting a lot. Also seen very low in fat, almost <laughs> no fat, which is great if, we're, if losing weight is a goal. But then take a look at these minerals. Excellent amounts of copper, of iron. We're getting two thirds of our daily iron re requirement just from 500 calories of potato. Again, magnesium, man manganese, phosphorus, potassium, really, really good, and low in sodium. And then take a look at this protein. Now, I don't wanna focus too much on protein because it's not especially high, but a good range across all of the essential amino acids. So I think the take home message from all of this is that thinking of potatoes as, as empty calories or just carbs with nothing else, would be a mistake. There is loads of great nutrition here, loads of fiber, loads of vitamins, minerals, a good range of amino acids in the protein. So a really nutritious food. Now, one thing I would say is that chronometer makes us think that a food is simply a collection of nutrients all bundled together. 
That is not the case. It's far more complex than that. And there are many powerful nutrients in all sorts of foods, including potatoes, that are not reflected in something like chronometer. So it really is an oversimplification. But nonetheless, it does give us a good idea that potatoes are nutrient rich. And not only are they nutrient rich, a very interesting property of potatoes is that they are incredibly satiating. They fill us up. One study created a satiety index of 38 different foods. They essentially fed people uh, in a trial uh, the same number of calories of different foods and then asked them to rate how full they felt. And simple white potatoes was head and shoulders above every other food they tried. And so if losing weight is a goal, then potatoes are your friend. They will help you feel full for longer with a smaller amount of calories compared to many other foods. So I suggest to you that potatoes are a health food, right? They are low in sodium, low in fat, no cholesterol, high in fiber, they're nutrient rich, and potatoes contain plenty of phytonutrients as well. These are things like carotenoids, anthocyanins, caffeic and chlorogenic acids, and these are all antioxidants. Now they're perhaps not quite as antioxidant rich as some other foods, but they do still have some. And in particular, the more intensely colored potatoes, for example, you can get purple potatoes or red ones sometimes, these more intense colors denote a greater antioxidant content. And indeed, purple potatoes have been shown to help with arterial stiffness. This is how stiff our arteries get. And stiff arteries are associated with cardiovascular disease, but purple potatoes allow them to relax and dilate naturally. Now, Dr. John McDougall is famous as a real potato proponent. And I wanna draw attention to one study he did with 1,703 people over a seven day program. So these people were put on a, a low fat, starch-based vegan diet with plenty of potatoes in there. And they wanted to see what the health effects would be in just seven days. Now, on average, people lost 3.1 pounds and their cholesterol dropped by 22 milligrams per deciliter. And for patients that had high blood pressure, their blood pressure actually dropped by an average of 18 over 11 millimeters of mercury. And nearly 90% of the patients were able to get off their high blood pressure and diabetes medications. And this is on a diet with 81% of calories coming from carbohydrates. Now, that is staggering. You can't achieve these kind of effects with drugs, right? And this is in seven days eating a potato-rich starch-based diet. That's pretty phenomenal. However, here's where the confusion comes in because the cooking method is critical. And indeed, there does seem to be evidence of a link, an association between eating more French fries or chips, we call them in the UK, and conditions like obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Now, this might seem contradictory. You might say, Ryan, you've just told me that potatoes are healthy, and now you're saying that they're associated with disease. What's going on here? Well, these potatoes have been deep fried in oil, and that makes a big difference. So looking at foods like French fries, potato chips or crisps, or perhaps a potato salad with a really fatty ranch dressing or sour cream dressing, these are not health foods. Why? Because the potato is no longer the main constituent of the meal, even though it looks like it is. The majority of the calories are coming from the fat in the cooking oil or in the dressing. So this is an instance where processing, essentially ultra processing, is robbing nutrition from the potato and it's adding in a lot of less healthy things. So what I would suggest and what the evidence seems to show is that we should enjoy potatoes in abundance when they're steamed or boiled or oven roasted without oil. But we really don't wanna be having potatoes when they've been deep fried in oil. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One, the, those high cooking temperatures and being surrounded by oil actually reduces the nutritional value of the potatoes because that high temperature is just frying everything to death. But we also see the formation of potentially harmful compounds 
in those uh, very fatty, high temperature conditions. Okay, let's get on to the practical questions of how you can use potatoes in your kitchen. And firstly, how do we store them? Well, we wanna keep them in a cool, dark and dry place. Exposure to light or moisture makes them rot faster. We also want our potatoes to be sort of well ventilated. So try not to keep them in an airtight air container. We want a, a good flow of air around them. Now keeping your potatoes in the fridge is not recommended, but keeping them in a kitchen cupboard or even a cellar, that would tick most of these boxes. So that's probably where you should keep them. Now, how can we prepare them? Well, first of all, if there are any sort of sprouting bits or green bits, we don't want to eat these, but there's no reason why we have to discard the whole potato. What I would tend to do is just cut off any kind of nasty bits on the surface, any sprouting bits or any bits that have gone green. And then the rest of the potato you can eat quite happily. We also want to make sure we give our potatoes, before we eat them, a good scrub under some cold water uh, and just get off any dirt that might be on the surface because they have grown underground. Um, but we really want, if we can, to be eating the skin. And there's two reasons for this. One, it's highly nutritious. Actually, a, a significant amount of that nutrition we discussed is contained in the skin of the potato. So if you discard it, you're shortchanging yourself. But the second reason is that it just takes a long time peeling and it makes you less likely to want to cook them. It makes the convenience of a ready meal that much more alluring, right? So just make it easy for yourself and eat the skin. Now, when it comes to cooking our potatoes, I think the first point is just to kind of reframe potatoes in your mind. And this is something that helped me a lot. I think many of us have sort of come to think of potatoes as a bit of a side dish, you know, like the French fries at the side of the meal next to the steak or the burger or whatever, right? But as we've said, they're a rich source of starch. This is the primary fuel that we need. So I would suggest that you think more of potatoes as a potential centerpiece to your meal. You can have them as a side, but you could equally have them as the center of your meal. So what are the cooking methods that we can use with potatoes? Well, boiling or steaming, these water-based methods work great. So we can cut them up into pieces and the smaller we cut them, the faster they're going to cook. So we've got some control there. One thing that I would encourage is you to add some flavor into that cooking water as they boil, right? So you could add some herbs, I think garlic or rosemary work really well, or even some spices, and that will infuse into the potatoes as they boil. Potatoes also work great in things like uh, curries, stews, casseroles, and soups. So in this case, you can just sort of throw them in into the, the cooking liquid and just let them cook along with everything else in there. And in that way, they'll also soak up all the flavors from the other ingredients you've got in the dish. And once we have boiled or steamed our potatoes, we can mash them. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. This is great for creating that lovely, silky, creamy texture and infusing flavor all throughout the potato. Now, traditionally, often oil or butter might be used in making a creamy mash, but you can use a lower fat thing. I think plant-based milks or a plant-based yogurt work great. Or if you wanted something a little bit fattier, maybe tahini would be good. And again, this is a good opportunity to throw in some herbs or spices. I find mustard works beautifully in mash. Now, this cooking method for potatoes is perhaps the best kept secret in the kitchen. Just microwave them. It's so fast and so easy and requires basically no washing up. It is ideal, especially if you are short on time. So we've already said we want to avoid deep frying potatoes to preserve their nutritional integrity. But there's no reason why we can't oven roast them without oil if we want. And in a future video, I'm gonna show you one of my go-to potato recipes I use all the time in which I roast them, but it's super hands-off and it is perfect when you're busy and you don't have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen, which I find is the case quite often. So if you would like to see that video, please consider subscribing so you don't miss it. Now, roasting potatoes really creates that lovely crispiness, that caramelization, absolutely fantastic flavors in our potatoes. And they really don't need oil to caramelize and crisp up well. But if you want to, you could make a sort of marinade uh, for them and sort of coat them in that before you roast them. 
And again, you definitely want to consider roasting potatoes with some herbs or spices to get those epic flavors in there. You can do so much here. You can sort of make them curried style potatoes with some spices. I think rosemary and thyme work really, really nicely. And when you cut potatoes, they're quite wet. So the herbs and spices will stick to them easily. So there we have it. That is my case for why potatoes should be considered a superfood and why I eat them all the time. And I suggest that anyone following a healthy whole food vegan diet might do the same. Now, as I've said, if we want to get more potatoes in our diets, we're gonna spend a little bit of time in our kitchens, but I don't want you spending any more time than you have to. So if you would like my guide on how to save time in the kitchen when you're cooking, please click the link in the description below. It's all yours. And if you would like to see the first video in my vegan superfood series where I talk all about the benefits of rocket or arugula, you might call it, you can click right here to watch that. I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.